In the early 1870s, Charles Darwin recounts making a trip to the London Zoo with the intention of proving to himself more than anyone that the startle response is not only a reflexive action, but totally involuntary. He does so by standing behind a thick layer of aquarium glass while observing a deadly puff adder strike at him. And although he's entirely safe behind the glass, every time the snake rushes towards him, Darwin leaps backwards, despite his best efforts to resist this primal urge. The point is this, the startle response is an evolutionary defense mechanism and it's been used and abused by horror filmmakers since films were even conceived. It's called the jump scare. And while I'm not here to discuss the merits of using jump scares in horror films, I will be discussing what does make an effective jump scare, and it's all grounded in well-explored human physiology. Here I won't be discussing the build-up, or what is meant by any particular scene story-wise, I will simply be breaking down the scare, which of course takes me to the most basic requirements of designing a powerful jump scare. Sound and movement. The two biggest factors at play when attempting to elicit a startle response from viewers are sudden changes in sound and movement, says Christian Grillon, PhD, a psychophysiologist who studies fear and anxiety at the National Institute of Mental Health. Flashes of light work too, and it's not so important how loud these sounds are, but how sudden their appearance is. This is why jump scares have worked effectively without the piercing shocker noises used so frequently in horror films, sometimes simply through the use of abrupt diegetic noise. A shotgun or a door slamming will make you startle, but a plane that takes off will not because the intensity of the noise only increases gradually, says Grillon. Expectation This is another point of interest in designing effective jump scares and has to do with a part of your brain called the amygdala. The amygdala is largely responsible for your emotional responses, including the startle response. When excited and on alert, perhaps when you sense a threat nearby, the amygdala reacts by increasing the startle response 100-300%. to this means that if you're expecting the scare, you will actually be more startled than not, as counterintuitive as that is. This explains why skilled horror filmmakers make it fairly obvious to their audiences that the scare is coming, draining the audio to near silence, draping the scene in darkness, priming your brain to react to shocking contrast. Hey, wanna play hide and clap? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading once a week and have many more film analysis videos to come.